As far as I can remember, uh, my fantasy is a big part of my personality. I, I, I know that my mother, she told me uh, that when I was very young, four or five years old, my father entered the, ho the house and I said, uh, take care, you're stepping on my dog. But we didn't have a dog. But it was my fantasy dog he was stepping on. And I know that, that I was always building up my own fantasies and in photography as an art for a long time, you have seen 30 years now, uh, that documentary, the re eh? Uh, photographing the reality was the main attraction and I always photographed the uh, reality translate into my fantasy. I think when a photographer or an artist makes his personal work it should be going about what is moving him in his life at that moment. So that can change throughout your life. You know, when I was young I was far more, let's say, uh, aggressive or sexual uh, obsessed or you know and then you give a translation you should give a translation of what is moving you in in, in life and then looking back i can see that it, it's reading like a kind of a diary i don't like straightforward comments because it's getting too political and too one-dimensional the older i get the more i try to make a dialogue in my, with my work so I want to challenge you as a viewer to, to make your own story or to make you think and not to, you know, to glue my opinion on, in your face, but just to say, okay, let's start a conversation about the, what's going on. When I was creating, um, starting to create a series Berlin, um, and uh, that I was at the airport waiting because I had a delay and there were all holiday families and the children were so powerful they were so demanding towards their parents i was sitting on my own for three four hours and i could study the you know the how it how this kind of little wars were going on between the grown-ups and the uh, and the, and the children and that gave me the idea that oh what if children would be in power you know and and they overrule the grown-ups and they decide and then you look for symbolism of course and then you come to these costumes, you know, the, the, the uniform, let's say. The difference for me between uh, phone two and one is that, let's say, when I'm looking now, although it's quite a sad book, volume one, I think the volume two is more the dark cloud coming towards us. I changed the thinking the, my last five years. I'm getting, looks like I'm getting a little darker. I see I'm getting sadder and wiser in a way and also worrying more about, uh, especially in my last five years, about a thundering cloud that's coming towards us in political sense, but also uh, environmental. And, and I, yeah, I always want to give a comment on uh, the situation in the world as I, as I see it. Well, I think this is a basic kind of emotion, uh, melancholia, in, in my life. You know, it is uh, for many people, I think. My mother said once, um, and she's just a very simple woman, but uh, she said once, uh, I'm sitting at home at the couch and I want to go home. And and I, th you know, even when I'm saying now, I so much understand what she was saying, that sometimes you can be at home and still you want to go home. And this is what I basically want to photograph. You have to know when you do stage photography, you have to invest a lot of money uh, because I have to build the set and I have to create uh, clothing, has to be created, the hair, the makeup. So you have to decide a lot of, 80% of the things you have to decide upfront. But then comes the moment of the shooting and then most of the time I'm in big panic because here is everything and but I don't know what I'm going to do it's all that depends very much on the dialogue between me and the model who will he or she or the, the, the models uh, how will they act you know what will they do why are they here you know, most of the time I only start to think about it at the moment that I start shooting. And then they give their acting to me. If you put a, a lady at the table 
and you give her a, a, a piece of cake, and if you put the cake on the table, it has a different meaning than when you put it on a lap. And I think that is such a very interesting uh, kind of photographic research when you make stage photography. The same goes for the body. You know, if your shoulders are up, you communicate completely different when they're down. If your eyes look like this, or you look like that, you communicate completely different. So the same goes with the objects. A bunch of flowers, when it are ten flowers, it is completely different than when it are three flowers in a vase. So for me, this is always when I'm starting to shoot, the big question, who is she? Is she a woman that buys ten flowers? Is she a woman that, that, that loves a purple vase? So I try to create a world around a model, around a person, to make you believe that she's real or he is real. When I started out photography, you know, when you're very young, you're very busy with sex and um, also very afraid. Uh, I was. You, you have to fight your demons a little bit. So I made very strong sexual pictures, very open. It was also the mentality of that time. You don't, uh, don't forget that that was the time of the squatters, uh, the time of the punk. After you have shot very explicit sexuality, you know, you can go say, okay, I'll go on with this because I have success with it. But I started to go getting a little bit bored with it, you know, and I just started a new series of nudes for myself, more laboratory, you know, looking what is, what is interesting about sex is the moment after. It yeah, can be very interesting after the sex. What happens with you? Or, or what has sexuality, wh why are we so happy with it? Is it because you can give away completely yourself? You don't have to think about how you look, eh? because most of the time when we have sex, we look like shit. Surrender, that is the word I'm looking for. Personally, I like very much people with a little color. You know, I think it's very sexy. And, uh, but I can also be, you know, very pale skin, which can be fantastic sexy. So I always, you know, I'm sexy driven. So when I see a beautiful Asian woman, I just finished a project, film and photography, with uh, this gorgeous Asian girl. And uh, I had to work with her, you know, uh, no doubt about it. And I'm gay as hell, but uh, I go for, for beauty. That is, let's say, the first thing, that you look for the beauty. In my earlier days, when I made a lot of nudity, you know, I was fascinated by the tone, you know, tone on tone. Well, when you do dark skin with dark background, uh, and then print it in the dark room, you know, beautiful uh, uh, barita printing it gave. I think that as you make your free work, your, 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 your own projects, you can do whatever you want. But I like to stand on the shoulders of generations before me, one artist told me once. And I love this uh, phrase. And I think we should do that. You know, you, you, you have to be aware uh, that so many fantastic things are already created in the past. And this is also nowadays, there's more and more and more and more photography, billions of pho photographs. Uh, that you cannot just say, oh, I'm going to make a beautiful picture or I'm going to make something I want to make. You know, you have to, or I have to, uh, to realize what has happened in the past and maybe co learn from it or comment on it or play with it, work with it. You know, so this is, I cannot do differently, you know. Otherwise, it's useless for me to make my own projects. Now we're shifting a little bit more, you know, because after 10 years, you, the difficulty, I think, of successful photography is that you uh, can become repetitive, and I don't want it. Mm -hmm.